Hey, we're back with another Zephyr Basics video. Today I'm taking a look at the JSON library that's built into Zephyr and how we can use it to decode JSON packets. So if you're getting data from the Goliath cloud, you can get it in JSON format. Of course, there's a ton of other things out there that use JSON format as well. It's nice to have this helper library so that you don't have to figure out how to parse these strings uh, yourself in C. And I dug into it a little bit. Today I'm using this example, which is just a couple of uh, values. You have um, some kind of heating device connected to your Internet of Things. You can set the heater to be either on or off. And then there's this nested value called heater temp. You can tell it what unit it is, either Celsius or Fahrenheit, and then a value as well. When I want to go and use the library, it's really easy to turn on. The first thing that you need to do is just put a kconfig directive into the prj.conf file to tell it to build the library. And then the second thing is up here at the top, we've added an include of the json.h header file. For me, the really interesting thing is how the JSON packets are mapped out by this library. In this case, it's all done through structs. So the first thing that I want to do to get ready for this is actually deal with this inner uh, nested value package right here. And so I have this struct that I'm calling temperature. It has a unit and a value. The unit is a string, the value is an int. These need to perfectly match what you're expecting in your JSON packet. So for instance, the names of these. Unit needs to match the key up here, and value is also gonna match the key, and then also the type. You'll notice that Celsius is a C in quotes, so that's a string, and 30 is a, an int, a number value. Uh, once we have that structure made up, we need to make a descriptor of it. And the descriptor basically tells the library how to crawl through the data and assign things. Uh, right here is the descriptor I'm using for this one. I've taken these macros, which take primitive values right here. And I'm calling the struct that we just made temperature. And then I'm assigning the elements. So I've got unit and I've got value, and then I'm using these uh, different identifiers for the type. So I'm telling it the unit's gonna be a string, and the value is going to be a number. So that takes care of the inner part of it. Now I actually need to make another struct to kind of wrap the whole thing up, and then we'll be ready to use it. So here's my second struct, I call it heater control. I've added to it one value, boolean, that is heater on, and again, that heater on name matches what we're expecting up here in the JSON. And then here I've actually added the structure that I previously created. So I'm calling uh, struct temperature, I'm gonna call it heater temp. Guess what, I get that name right here from the key to the nested value as well. Once I have this struct made, I need to create a descriptor for this as well. It's very similar to what we did before except you'll notice that the first one is a primitive as we would expect and i've called it a, a true false value the second one though is an object so i'm actually going to call the heater control struct type the name is heater temp that's the name that i set up in my heater control struct so it tells it which element to pull in but the type is different the type that you need to give it here is the roadmap that we created before so the, the descriptor once we have all that together, we can go down and actually call the function that's going to do our parsing. Here it is, JSON object parse. This feeds just a few values. The first two are the string that is the JSON and the length of that string. The next two values I need to feed it are the descriptor that I just created and the length of that descriptor, in this case, the number of elements that are in that descriptor. And then finally, I need to give it a struct to store the values that it parses. And that's gonna be the same type as we created for our descriptor, but we need to make a standalone variant here to uh, store the answers to it. You can see below, I have set it up to just print out these values, so the heater on value, and then our nested values, heater temp unit and heater temp value. And if we pull up a terminal, and uh, I'm gonna pull up the Goliath console as well. So in the terminal, you can see that we've already seen this data come out. It's true and Celsius and 30, uh, but I am observing the data on the cloud so I can change it on the Goliath cloud. Let's say we actually needed it to be at 33 Celsius. As soon as I submit that, we should see it come up. And here it is right there. 
one of the really interesting things about this is that it's going to validate that data for you. So for instance, if I accidentally made this 33 a string, so now you can see it's got the quotes on it instead of just being a number, it's actually going to cause uh, an error uh, value to be returned when we try and parse it because it's saying, oh, we can't use this data. We expected to get an int and we got a string. So I think that's really good. One of the um, kind of strange things about this is that, uh, let's say we're just gonna re completely remove this value and delete it. It's still gonna parse it, but now we got this like undefined, like it's screwy data, this shouldn't have come out. And the thing to look at for that is the return code that we're getting from our parsing. And I've actually calculated what I expect the return code to be and it calculated it to be right. So like, why are we getting this error if we got bad data? And the reason is, I've made a little graphic to help for this. Um, each time the library finds a token, it's gonna set a bit. So it found heater on, it set bit one, and then it found heater temp, and it set bit two. Well, the problem is, if you look over here, heater on, yep, that's what we wanted, heater temp, that was the name of our nested value. It didn't actually look for the values inside of the nesting. And that's not entirely great. So what we actually want to do is we want to have it find heater on, we want to have it find unit, and we want to have it find value. And so we actually want to get a return code of seven. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But the reason that we went through this whole exercise of setting up these nested values like this is to show one, this problem, but also if you're going to encode your data and your backend is expecting a specific format. So is it's expecting to get a key to a nested um, values. You're going to need to set it up this way. And then when you use, you know, the counterpart to this JSON object parser, when you use the JSON object in code, you're going to get the string the way that your backend expects it. But we can actually use a trick. We don't have to build all this nesting. And so I've got a uh, I've got a branch that I set up and you can see that I've actually changed where now we're just using one struct and one descriptor and I've put everything together so I have our heater on the boolean value I have the unit which is a string and I have the value and then when I give it to the descriptor it's just those three primitive values in there I'm going to go down here this stuff's not going to change like all of this stuff is going to be the same how all of it works I do need to get out of here and go through West Flash again. Now, if you uh, change something and then you type West Flash, it's gonna look at it, detect the change, and then it's gonna go ahead and uh, rebuild the project before flashing it. In this case, I'm just running it on an ESP32 and it's uh, connecting to the Goliath Cloud through my Wi-Fi. And then if we go back in and look at our output, it might take just a second to connect to the Goliath cloud. And what I'm actually expecting here is to get an error. So we got an error here. So we were expecting a return code of seven, we got a return code of three. Well, I'm dumping the payload and if you look at it here, we only got three of the keys we're looking for. We got heater on and we got unit. Uh, and that's because remember I deleted that key to see what would happen. So in this case, the key is missing. We want to get some notification that that key is missing. And the reason for that, when we look at our graphic again, this value is what's missing. That would have been in the, the third bit, which is, uh, you know, one, two, four. So our, our return code is three, that's these two bits. We're missing this fourth. And if we go to our console, that's obvious. If we add this back in value and we give it some, let's see, it's gonna be 27 this time and we submit it and then we watch we're gonna get that value to come out right here. So it's a little trick that you can use for decoding that you can just skip the key for the nested value that's in there. I hope you found this helpful. If you are looking for more advice on how to use these sorts of things, there's not a ton of documentation out there. I do suggest checking out the automated testing file that's in the Zephyr uh, SDK itself. And of course, if you just want to talk about this stuff and look over some use cases, we'd love to have you on our office hours, which are every Wednesday on our Discord. We'll see you next time.